Hey Alice, I was thinking about a question. We meet so many people who are uh, SCA survivors that have no need for an ICD, uh, but feel they need one or think they should have had one put in. Is there any words of advice from the doctor to encourage those who don't have or have the need of one? I think sometimes those lines get blurred with some survivors in our community. Maybe this picks up a bit uh, on the research or some of the research that you were mentioning in the beginning. Um, sure yeah. What well, let me let me say first off, of course, some sudden cardiac arrests have reversible causes. And once we reverse that cause, then the risk is essentially back to normal. And so, um, you know, that's a fortunate outcome medically. Um, we don't see that all the time. Secondly, remember that the ICD is has a history, right? So it goes back to uh, the first implant in 1980 the uh, FDA approval in the United States by 1985, and then clinical trials around 1996 being the first time that we started saying, okay, now we have the data to expand the use of this technology, about 1996, okay? So we have, what, a 28-year runway here. During that time, we just basically only knew what we knew, which was people with cardiac arrest need one of these devices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And it's only as science progresses that we start to separate high and low and medium risk. And so when you look at somebody with a reversible cause, we start saying, oh, okay, well, maybe they, based on 20, 20 plus years of experience, when we put some in people and you say, well, they didn't use it and they didn't need it, maybe they were low risk. But we weren't in a position in 1996 and going forward to, to to rank risk. We just, yeah. we don't have that data. All we have is ejection fraction uh -huh. in general. Now we're getting better and better and more recent research, but I'm talking about go back 20, 25 years. And so the message we send to the medical community, the patient community is everybody needs a defibrillator that has this experience because we didn't know any better. Now we're moving toward being smarter and we're not going to race to the defibrillator every time for every case in in every way, but that's where we were. And so it takes time for, for our information and our confidence in that information and our ability to apply it to the single person in front of us to be fully realized. So I think the bottom line is this, getting confident after any cardiac event is a must do. If you are not confident, then we need to do something. What will we do? Well, the first and foremost is talk with your medical team about what are your risks and what are your forecasts or prognosis? Should I be worried? And the answer in this case is probably gonna be no, you're safe. Oh, okay. If you, if you continue to have fears after that conversation, because you've already had that conversation, they said, just do whatever you want. Then the next thing you gotta do is engage something around what are you unsure about. Most people, it's exertion. So there we need to engage cardiac rehab or physical therapy or a personal trainer or your medical team to kind of put together, cobble together a plan about how to return to activity in a stepwise manner so that you can do that safely and strongly. And then third, if you still don't feel confident, then we got to talk about it some more. Right. And talking about it means getting some counseling about you know, resuming life with confidence after this hard event. All three of those, I don't really want to put them in rank order. That's not really fair. I mean, I think different, they need to be a, a mosaic, you know, put these pieces together to put together a plan. I mean, my life's work has been trying to train cardiologists and, and healthcare facilities that the psychological experience is both demanding and normal and expected. Right. So everybody needs a plan. Every patient needs a plan to resume life. You just simply can't work on people's hearts without recognizing you've inadvertently worked on their mind. That's true. Yes. If you work on the heart, you've worked on the mind. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I feel uh, from the survivors that I know that don't have an ICD that a reason why they still might feel, I don't know, not... not I don't know, not so good with that is because they're anxious that they might have another event, another cardiac arrest, right? And that, yeah, there's no parachute. 
Yeah, that's right. And and we are working closer uh, on this concept of fear of recurrence. This is actually a psychologic concept that's common in cancer. Um, it's never really been studied in cardiology. A group of Australian researchers under a guy named Alan Jackson and others um, have begun working on um, fear of recurrence as a concept in cardiology. Um, it's excellent work. We're, we're, we, we have some similar work around fear of atrial fibrillation occurrence. But you see what's happening? Even back to this question, we told everybody everywhere, yeah, you probably ought to get a defibrillator. Now we're getting smarter. And now even psychology is getting smarter because before we were just looking for depressed and anxious people. Now we're saying, hmm, forget about just diagnosing people. Let's think about what are the common experiences that basically all patients face. So all patients face, what if this comes back? All patients face, well, how much can I do? Am I allowed to do what I want to do? These are so common that we need a we need a plan for every patient on these ideas, not just those who say I'm anxious. We need, every patient needs communication about exertion, communication about fear of recurrence, communication about a number of issues. Um, and so, you know, we got to get better. Your podcast is pushing some new topics and new ideas, and maybe somebody will hear this and 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 want to work on this. You know, because we're we're certainly working on it, but we can't move fast enough. I can't. Uh, I wish I didn't need to sleep. I could get more stuff done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be amazing. Yeah, but uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, that's how life is. It's it takes time, and and science evolves slowly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but okay, we're getting smarter. That's 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 good. Maybe for so for I would reassure this person using that stepped plan hmm. that that you know, they probably got the message that the defibrillator is the only way to be safe. And it is a yes. powerful way of being safe. But there are but there are other ways to be safe, including medications and clinic visits and follow up and and yes. diagnostic yes. testing. Those things should reassure when they look at your echo and everything looks good and they tell you that's important. 